Hey, I'm Chris Guns. Welcome back to Pro Boxing Insider Radio. I had the chance to catch up with uh, super middleweight contender Will Rosinski. He just signed to fight uh, ex middleweight champion Kelly Pavlik on July 7th. So I decided to check in with uh, Will Rosinski to see how he's feeling getting ready for his biggest fight today with uh, Kelly Pavlik. See what he had to say. Welcome, Will Rosinski. Getting ready for the biggest fight of your life so far. You're no slouch. This is going to be a tough fight for Kelly Pavlik, too. You had a great amateur career coming up in Ozone Park, New York, didn't you? I did, I did. And it's absolutely going to be the toughest fight, I guarantee it. Now, describe growing up in Ozone Park. Uh, it, it, you know, it was a good living. Uh, Middle class type of guy. Uh, not a rough neighborhood. Went to Catholic school my whole life. I mean, I have no complaints. Mm -hmm. And what kind of kid were you? I was a little bit of a clown. Uh, <laughs> not a bad kid, but a clown. I chewed all the brothers. Uh, so I always, knew they, I always knew they had my back, so I was never worried about anything. But I was a good kid. <laughs> yeah. So so would it be a competitive household? Were your brothers in boxing too? Or? No, actually they weren't. They weren't at all. My, my, my uh, One older brother was into karate when we were younger. But, uh, you know, he gave that up. And uh, I was really the only fighter. Actually, one's a tattoo artist, and the other one was into... To hip hop, but uh, it, one is still a tattoo artist, and I'm, you know, I'm still fighting. Mm -hmm. So, who got you into boxing to begin with? I think it was uh, <clears throat> from when I, from when I, I started doing karate when I was young, real young, like you know, eight, nine, ten, eleven, and uh, I kind of got bored of it. And then uh, once I got into high school, a friend, a friend, pretty much got me into boxing. He said, you know, try it out. I figured I had some karate background. I'd give it a shot. And uh, that's why I started a little late. I mean, I started fighting really when I was like 14, 15. I probably had my, my first fight was uh, actually the day before my 18th birthday. So I was training for about two years before I had my first amateur fight, which is considered late, 18 years old. Yeah. So you started competing at 18? Yeah, I started my first amateur fight was pretty much when I was 18 years old. Wow, man. And, and your total amateur record was what? What was it? Uh, 85 and 12. <clears throat> wow. And... How many times did you win the New York Gold Gloves? Was it four times? Yeah, four times I won the Gold Gloves. And I, and, but I did lose it twice. I lost it in the first two years in, in the novice class, and I came back in the open division and won it four years in a row. Wow. And tell me about who you had to fight in some of those tournaments. Was there any names we'd recognize? Uh, no, no names you'd recognize. I, I mean, I fought some national, you know, on the national level, I fought some tough guys like Christopher Down. The, the guy, he actually made the Olympic team. Um, Cedric Agnew, that's a pro now. Uh, um, I forget names, man. Uh, kid I beat in the finals at a U.S. championship. So all, all kids that are, are doing well as pros, uh, I fought in the amateurs in, on the national level. Yeah. How, how important do you think it is to have a good, sound amateur career when it comes to pro boxing? You know what? It, it gives you it gives you a taste of a lot of different styles. Uh, but, you know, when it comes to the pros, you, you, you hand pick your opponents more rather than fighting whoever's up next. I mean, in the amateurs, you get bracketed and you have to go out there and fight whoever it is. Some of those guys might come, become world champions. Some of them may not. But uh, when you're an amateur, you really have no choice. You got to get out there and fight and uh, not worry about you know how good or bad they are. You really don't get to pick. You don't really have much of a choice. So you know, it, it, it manages up a little bit in amateurs. Yeah, you were the 2005 U.S. Amateur Champion at Light Heavyweight. Uh, how'd that feel, winning that one? Oh, it was the best, best thing ever. And mainly because I, I, was, uh, I was a big underdog. Nobody knew who I was. I only had about 15 amateur fights at that point. Um, you know, mostly novice class. And I came in, I mean, I, you know, they had the magazine with all the top guys in each weight class. You know, I was nowhere to be found. And I think once I started winning, I started making a lot of noise. So it was it was a great feeling just being the underdog in that tournament, and then kind of kind of coming out of nowhere and beating a lot of tough guys. Yeah. Did you did you have Olympic hopes? I did. I did. <clears throat> um, you know, I won the right tournament, but the wrong year. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, I I got to I was I fought the U.S. Championships in 2007 for the for the, for the 08 uh, Olympics, and I came up short. You know, but that, that's boxing. Mm -hmm. you, you, take, you take your wins with your loss, you keep moving forward. It's like a more macho sport than most sports. So a lot of people really hate losing in boxing, but it's a sport, you know. You got to have a winner, you got to have a loser. Can't win them all, Will. <laughs> you know? Absolutely. 
And how did you feel when you did miss out? Were you kind of devastated? Yeah, I was. I was because it was it was a kid I should have. I forget the kid's name, but it was a kid I should have beat. Um, you know, I I, I I felt I did lose a fight. I didn't get robbed or anything like that. But it, you know, it was it was just a bad night to have a bad night, and uh, it happens in boxing. Not every day is a good day. But, you know, you, you got to like I said, you got to take the wins with the losses and keep going. Yeah, you got a chance to travel though. A lot of people don't. Where's some of the best places you got to see as an amateur boxer? Uh, I've been to China. I've been to Hungary. I've been to Russia. That was, that was all good experiences, man. And I was the captain of the USA team, which was cool uh, for most of those tournaments. You know, and uh, I had a lot of good times, a lot of good memories, a lot, a lot of good guys. Yeah, and then uh, you decided to put it in your rear view and you turned pro. What do you remember about your first opponent? Do you remember who was and where and what the result was? Yeah, it was uh, uh, Valentin Fortinelli from, I forget where he's from, I fought him at BB Kings on a Debella card. Uh, he was like one in four, you know, um, but I just had the nerves of, of, of not having a head gear no more, having the smaller gloves. You don't know what to expect, you know, it's, you know, so you take baby steps in the beginning. And, um, I knocked him out in the first round, had him hit him with some nice body shots and then, uh, ended up upstairs. So that was a good, that was a good, uh, a good win for me, but, you know, now I'm here. So that's mm -hmm. even more important. Yeah, and so far the biggest fight of your life came against Edwin Rodriguez, and you knew him well from the amateur days too. What was it like uh, when you found out you had to fight Edwin, and, and what did you think about you, your friend Ed? Uh, I, you know what? I had a lot of respect for him because uh, I know Edwin very well from the amateurs. We were actually roommates. You know, we, me, me, him, Demetrius Andrade, we all got along, and you know, because we're all from uh, the northeastern region, so we we always seen each other. You know, we we got along very well. Um, I respect him as a person, as a fighter, and, I, and you know, and he was doing good as a pro, and he's still doing good as a pro. Um, I knew it was, I know, I knew I was in for a tough fight. I knew I was in for a tough night. I knew he had some boxing skills. I knew he had, you know, some pop. Um, but you know, it's boxing. I'm not, I'm not here to duck people. You know, I, I want to fight the best guys, or at least make my way up to fighting the best guys. You know, I, I don't want to sit in club shows my whole career and fight guys with a. Uh, losing records and things like that. You know, I want to make a statement. I'm not here to fight 100 fights in, uh, in little club shows in New York either. I want, to be, I want to be more on a world level. So that was my first opportunity, and now this is my next. Yeah, and I feel so fortunate to have been there, man. That was a great fight. <laughs> I, I know that, that they gave him, like, every single round, but I, I know it was way closer than that. <laughs> yeah, it was cool. It was a good, very competitive fight. You know, I'm not taking nothing away from him. You know, he don't judge the fights, so can't be mad at him, but... Again, that's boxing. What are you going to do? I got to look past that now because now I'm in a I'm in a big position. Yeah. And did you did you fight him any differently? Being the fact that you guys were friends, did you, do you feel like you had as much uh as much want to, um, to get him? Yeah. No, yeah. Absolutely. Absolutely. Because I had a big point to prove. You know, it was it was my first TV date, big TV date. Um, that that whole friends thing goes out the window, and I'm sure it did for him too. Uh, once you fight, you know, because now it's now, now it's do or die with, with, with your career. You know, a, a lo one loss, even though it's one loss, you know, you have a you have a one in the L record. It you know it, it sets you back a little bit, and neither one of us wanted to get set back. So, you know, we're both fighting our hearts out for for that to keep that win column uh, and that loss column deep. Yeah. Did you realize what a brutal war it was when you were in the fight? Because it looked brutal from from rings. Yeah, I, you know what? It didn't. I, I I mean, I felt like I was chasing him more, mm -hmm. and, and and you know. And, you know, he was trying to box, well, which he, he was, but it was there wasn't a lot of inside fighting, you know? It, yeah. and, and, I didn't, and, and I honestly didn't realize how much there was a lot of inside fighting until I actually sat down and watched the fight. Mm -hmm. And, and how do you feel just seeing your, your record and it doesn't have that O on it anymore? Did it do something to you? The, how, uh, how yeah, it hurts, it hurts a little bit, but, you know, it, it drives you, you know, it makes you drive even harder to, to, to prove that 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 one doesn't belong there because you know once if if I start beating good guys for example Kelly Pavlik um, that one gets smaller mm -hmm. in my eyes you know because I mean people <clears throat> saw that fight people had their own opinions on the fight whether I won lost a draw got killed thought it was close whatever they think you know everyone has their own opinion which is good because it wasn't like I just got 
whooped for 10 rounds, and now it's like, oh, he got that loss. It, it, it's a shady loss simply because a lot of people feel that scoring was ridiculous, and a win against Kelly Pavlik uh, puts me in a in a very, very good position, and that one team is like nothing at this point. Yeah. Did you did you talk to Edwin Rodriguez at all since the fight? No, I haven't. I haven't. No. And how did you hear that you had the that you were even in the Kelly Pavlik sweepstakes? Uh, well, I actually I told my advisor Keith Conley. I told him I said after he fought on June eighth, he fought Scott Sigmund. Um, the, I mean Scott Sigmund was there for the payday. I feel um, you know, and and Pavlik didn't he didn't capitalize on his ability, meaning. The old Kelly Pavlik would have, I think, would have put him out in one or two rounds, easy, real easy. No matter how much a kid like that could take a punch, um, and I just didn't see the same Kelly Pavlik. And I know he's trying to rebuild his career, and I, and I understand that. But I told my advisor, I said, you know, I want to fight Kelly Pavlik soon, you know, soon, because I think it, I think it's a good a good fight for me, and it's a fight I could definitely win, you know. Um, and, and he's a name, you know, because he he was obviously a, a champ, and he you know he had an awesome career. Um, after the Adam Pryor fight, the next day when the Brandon Rio fight fell out, my advisor called me and said, you're getting what you want. I said, what do you mean? He said, what do you think about fighting Kelly Pavlik in three weeks? Now, the, now the, the, the monkey wrench in that in that whole equation was three weeks. Mm-hmm. I said, you know what? I really didn't take no real punches this last fight yesterday. I, I have no, there's no cuts. There's no bru. I mean, there was cuts. It wouldn't matter anyway, but there's no cuts. There's no bruises. I feel fine. I didn't even feel like I was going to fight. It was almost like a spawn match. You know, I said, you know what? I'm ready. I'm all way to ready. I feel good. I might as well take it. It's an opportunity I can't refuse. You know, it's, it's an HBO card against a, a former world champion that's trying to make his way back up. How can I How can I say no to that fight? Yeah. It'd be ridiculous. Yeah. And if you're a fighter, you you got to respect Kelly when he's at his best. How do you plan to fight him? Do you have a plan yet? I do. I do. Um... You know, a, a boxing and brawl. My main thing is controlling the pace. Mm-hmm. Once you let, once I realized, what, and, and even when he was at his best, because I don't think he's at his best now. Um, if you let him control the pace, you're in, you're in for a problem because he, he gets the he keeps the, the right distance and he and he he'll throw that big right hand. Um, I think his right hand is his best punch, although he's probably got power in, in both hands at 160, not at 168. Um, and it's all about, for me, I, we've been working on just controlling the pace. And, you know, come fight night, it's basically, I, you know, I got to adapt and, and see, see where I'm going with it. You know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah. And are you going to train uh, in the same place and the same way for Kelly, or are you doing anything new? This is a big fight. Uh, no, I, I, you know, I train for everyone the same, whether it's Edwin, Kelly Pavlik, or uh, a 10-year-old. I'm going to train from the same like that, you know. They're ready to fight hard, so you know I'm ready. I'm ready for ten rounds, easy, no problem. Whether he presses me or tries to box, um, and uh, I think I'm going to give him. Well, I know I'm going to give him a, a lot more than a lot of people expect. And I mean, a lot of people are comparing me to Scott Sigmund, which is almost an insult. But I don't mind because that means everyone's looking past me. So being the underdog, I don't mind. I'm, you know, after that, everyone fight, I'm kind of used to it. Um, and I'm, I'm looking to shock a lot of people. Mm-hmm. You, do you think you could stop them, or are you looking more at just winning a decision? I, I'm, I'm, I'm just looking to win, man. If, if the stop, if the stoppage comes, that would be uh, awesome. If it mm-hmm. doesn't, it's okay. I'm, I'm, I don't, I don't predict nothing, and uh, I don't look for knockouts. Mm-hmm. So, but if I, if I see it, of course, I'm going to jump on it, as we, he would, and uh, I'm, I'm, I'm ready to fight ten rounds. Yeah, and is there any added nerves the fact that the fight's going to be on HBO? You know what? The day of, possibly. I don't know. Hmm. I feel good now. I feel in shape. Um, I, I guess I haven't thought that far yet. Maybe when I hit California on July 1st, it might become more of a reality. But, you know, at the end of the day, when the light's <clears> dim <throat> and, and the whole ring is bright, you can't even tell where you are anyway, whether it's the camera there or not, you know, you're there to perform, so... Yeah. I, I don't. I don't think it should be. I'm pretty confident with my uh, ability. So, and Will Rosinski, you got a lot of fans off that Edwin Rodriguez fight. What do you say to them all who who are rooting for you in this Kelly Pavlik fight? Uh, I appreciate all of you. Uh, I, I I love the love that everyone's given me. Um, I'm looking to perform awesome. 
July 7th. I'm looking to shock a lot of people, and I'm, and I'm looking to answer the question that everyone seems to be asking, which is, who is Will Rosinski? Because a lot of people don't know on a national level, other than the, you know, the boxing that, that sort of fight on Showtime. But, you know, now it's a bigger, broader audience. I, I hope to, to prove who Will Rosinski is, who I am. Yeah, I can tell Will Rosinski believes what he says. I know you're going to give it give it 110%. It's going to be a great fight. I know you won't disappoint, man. Good luck. Appreciate it. You'll appreciate it. All right, I'll talk to you after the fight, man. Take it easy. Good luck. Thank you. Bye. Bye-bye. And there you have it. Super middleweight contender Will Rosinski sounded pretty confident about to fight the ghost. Maybe too confident to be fighting a ghost, if you ask me. No, but you do have to be confident, and, and he has an abundance of it. So I can't wait to see that fight take place. I know he's not going to disappoint. He's going to give it his all. Thanks for joining me on this interview. And follow me on Twitter at Chris2Guns. Thank you.